the 2008 Audi TT. Uh, the TT is all new for 2008, and in fact there was no 2007 model. They skipped that model year and took the and completely changed it from the 2006 model year. They still retained essentially the same format. They have a Roadster and a Coupe. As a Coupe, it does have a small back seat that might be fit for smaller adults or children, uh, but the Roadster has no back seat at all. It is a slightly larger car, however, so there is more room for passengers and for cargo. But because it's a larger car, uh, it is also a little bit heavier, and they've maintained the same engines, either a, a 2-liter 4-cylinder turbo or a 3.2-liter V6. Uh, they don't get any more horsepower, so the car is actually slightly slower than it was before, but in return for that, you do get a little bit added comfort in addition to the extra room. As a small roadster, the TT is essentially the fun car at Audi. It's not the most expensive car, nor the cheapest, but uh, it is a lot of fun to drive. It handles extremely well. It's available with or without the all-wheel drive Quattro system. Uh, with the four-cylinder engine, you can only get the front-wheel drive version, however. On the base Roadster, actually the top is a manual top, but a uh, pretty popular option is the fact that it's got a power top that's pretty easy to use. You just unlatch it, push a button, and uh, it's done fairly quickly in a small car like this. The only way to open the trunk in the Roadster is either with the key fob or a uh, button on the driver's door. You can see there's no actual button or latch here. So we just hold this until it op pops open, then we just raise it up. And it's not a huge trunk, which you wouldn't expect in a Roadster, but it is surprisingly decent, uh, considering that uh, the trunk, the top, folds completely away, out of sight. So we do have a, a nice flat trunk with a pretty wide opening. It's a little higher, but they have to keep the structural rigidity here. Uh, you see underneath here, um, there's room for the tire when we take it off. I noticed that the battery is back here. That's just for weight distribution to try and uh, keep things good. We have a rear spoiler that comes up at speed or you can put it up manually with a push of a button inside the passenger compartment. And we also have a windbreaker that comes up with a push of a button. It's one of the nicest windbreakers since uh, we don't have to stop the car and get out manually. We can just put it up if we want to see the difference that makes in the air brake. You can see the interior here is uh, certainly one of the nicest Audi's always been known for that. They've done a very good job. We've got a nice steering wheel. The steering wheel is a little bit smaller diameter than uh, yours do in some cars, but uh, it's not too bad. You can see you re can release it and it will both uh, tilt and telescope. And it telescopes over a pretty wide range, so uh, people with uh, differing size torsos and arm lengths will, should be pretty happy with this car. The instruments are very easy to see. Uh, I get a nice clear view of everything within the steering wheel. We have an uh, LCD in the middle that gives me the time, a little bit of trip computer information, our gear shift position, and also the outside temperature. And you know, it's, uh, it's kind of unusual. We even have kind of a flat bottom steering wheel here. You don't see that in cars today very often, but uh, because this is a small cockpit, it may help people with tall thighs that uh, may have some issue with that, but uh, getting in and out of the car. But I think it's more of a styling trick. You do get nice thumb position so your steer your hands are properly positioned on the steering wheel for good driving control. You notice we have paddle shifters in this car. Uh, we have downshift on the left and upshift on the right. They're mounted to the steering wheel, not the steering column. Of course, most people would prefer the steering column because if you're driving cornering quickly, uh, you know where to find them. If your steering wheel's over here, you, it's difficult to shift at the same time. Okay, you see we have, uh, we have actually five air vents for two people, so uh, we can share the middle one obviously and everybody gets two more. Uh, you control the on and off by simply swiveling the outside portion. That's uh, pretty nice. Nice little grip to it. And then everything else is very easy to control. It's, net. it's got a nice smooth action to it. I like that. Then of course in the middle we have our big clock here and of course we can turn on our radio. Uh, we have satellite radio in this car, uh, although it it's not working particularly well right now, uh, so we can't get any information. Unusual in this car, we actually have an iPod mount, uh, which is in the glove box. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us any information on the iPod, and, and of course we can vary our tone, our bass, uh, everything's everything's pretty easy to adjust in this car. There's, there's not a lot of issues here with things. Um, the iPod setting, the iPod is accessible actually by pushing the CD button, so if we had a CD in dash also I think uh, we just toggle back and forth 
As you can see, uh, we have automatic climate control here. Um, just turn it off if we want to. Um, but just push the auto setting and then we can adjust the temperature over here. And if we want to change uh, where the air is coming from, we have a button to push here. We have a, a knob to turn here that will either have it coming from down below, above, or some sort of a mix. We can adjust that manually if we want. And then of course we have our defroster controls front and rear. Uh, at the moment it's not letting me turn on the rear defroster since the top is down. Then down below here of course we have an ashtray. Just a small little ashtray and a cigarette lighter which most people might just remove and use as a 12 volt outlet to charge things. We do have seat heaters. Uh, they're, uh, they're actually a three position. We can hit, have it high, medium, low and then off as the next button. Instead of the traditional automatic, Audi offers what they used to call the DSG or Direct Sequential Gearbox Transmission. Uh, now they've changed the name to S-Tronic, although DSG is still used at Volkswagen. Although internally it is still technically a manual transmission, it has dual clutches that are operated by a computer. There's no foot clutch and everything can be left in drive and operates like a pretty smooth automatic. You can also change the gears manually using either the gear shift lever or the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. In essence, it works either way. It works as a very refined manual with extremely quick shifting, faster than is humanly possible with a traditional manual, or it works very well as an automatic. Or in sport mode, it works as a much sportier automatic than any other traditional automatic type transmission. Now, personally, this is my favorite gearbox in the automotive industry today. The other buttons we have here, of course, uh, ESP is Electronic Stability Program. Uh, you can turn that off if you want to do a little bit of higher performance driving and be able to let the car get a little loose in the turns. Uh, it always defaults on when you turn on the car for safety reasons. Of course, our four-way flashers. This is the button that will manually raise and lower the rear spoiler. This button has to do with the tire pressure monitor system. This, of course, is what we use to raise and lower the top, and this will button raises and lowers the windbreaker. We just have a small pair of cup holders here. This one hold a large mug. Back here, of course, we do have a 12-volt outlet. And of course, this is for the optional telephone that we can get with this car. Back here, of course, we have a locking storage that also holds a first aid kit, which uh, isn't in here right now. So uh, fortunately, none of us have gotten hurt. Up at the top here, we have the integrated roll bar. Uh, it's just built in and doesn't pop up or anything. It just stays there and protects us if we do roll over. We do have a nice locking glove box, so we do have some secured storage in this car. Uh, you can notice that we have room for the manual. This glove box doesn't, door doesn't actually go down far enough for my liking. It's kind of hard to get back in there, but there is some space back in there and you can see how far it goes and it's lighted. Uh, you can see there's an extra little compartment here and this slot actually holds an iPod. We have a, an iPod here plugged in right now and uh, you just stick it in and it's a full dock. We haven't been able to get it to show everything uh, that we'd like to, so we're still working on that. It may be a technical deficiency on our part. We have our rearview mirror has a compass in it, uh, which is nice. You can see we're facing south, and we can turn the uh, dimmer on and off so that when lights shine behind us, if we don't want it to dim, we can make it so it doesn't. And of course, we have map lights. You just push the button next to the light for the light to turn on, or you can turn them uh, on and off with the door. And up here, you can see we have uh, Roman numerals 1, 2, 3 is for the home link that we can be programmed to open our garage door. Our sun visors are very interesting. They uh, actually come back from the front, uh, a little different than most. They do have small mirrors. There's no lighting up here, and the sun visors do not detach and swing to the side. So they're just small, skinny sun visors of some marginal value. This is the adjustment for the interior instrument lighting. Uh, this actually can adjust the DRLs, or daytime running lights, so we can actually turn them off if we want to. Uh, that's not allowable in most cars. It's interesting that Audi allows that. This is actually the control to turn on and off the cruise control. Unusual position, but here it is. Headlights, of course, off, auto. Once we turn them on or to high, uh, we can pull out, uh, pulling them out, pulling them, pulling the switch out, which can't be done in the auto mode, will turn on the fog lights. Here we have the traditional seat controls from Audi, power seat. We have power recline, uh, power forward, up and down, front or rear, and of course, power lumbar, which can be adjusted up and down. And that's the 2008 Audi TT from carvideoreview.com. Thank you for watching.